Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're adding our crouching feature back into our player's safe machine. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. We sort of nuked our previous crouching code in the last episode. Our state machine logic is much improved, but obviously the crouching doesn't work anymore. Thankfully, because we've adjusted our code, adding it back in is gonna be a breeze. First, we need a new child node for our state and a new script to extend our new player movement state class and create our new crouching state. Remember, we already have our crouching animation set, so we can start coding our state logic and then work out our transitions. Our crouching state script will look like this. We set our class name and extend our player movement state script to give us access to our player and animation variables. We then have our collection of export variables so we can set our speed, acceleration, deceleration, and the speed of our crouching animation when we are in our crouching state. We then get a reference to our shapecast3d node that we're using for our crouch collision check. I'm going to create a unique name for this node and then an onReady variable to reference it later. When we enter our state, we'll play our crouching animation at our set crouching speed. In our update function, every frame will run our gravity, input, and velocity functions like our other movement states. Then when we release our crouch button, for now we're gonna keep this as a hold button style of crouch, we'll run a new function uncrouch where we'll keep our uncrouching logic. In our function, we check if our shape cast is colliding with anything. If false, and if we aren't still pressing our crouch button, we run our uncrouch logic. The and here is for when someone uncrouches and then crouches again. So we need to still check for that crouch action. If those requirements pass, then we play our crouching animation in reverse. The true here makes the animation play from the end and we reverse the animation with a negative animation speed. Then we check if the animation is still playing. If it is, we wait until the animation is finished using the animation finished signal. Then we transition to our idle player state. Then we use an else if for when our shape cast hits something. If it does, we wait 0.1 seconds with the await line here, then run the entire function again. And that's the entirety of our crouching state logic. We just need to add our transitions and make some adjustments to our other states. We want to be able to transition to crouching from idle, walking, and sprint. So we need to add transition logic to each. In idle, we add an input check in our update function along with a check if we're on the floor. In walking, we add the same input check. Now for sprinting, you can definitely add the same input check, but we're going to add a sliding state for when we're going from sprint to crouch. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Then one bug fix I found relating to the animation speed scale I'm adjusting that scale using the player's velocity, but I found that if I sprinted or walked then stopped, that speed scale was set to zero, and then if I crouched, the animation wouldn't play. Luckily, the fix is easy. I utilize the exit function for both the walking and sprinting state scripts, and then reset the speed scale to one when we transition from those states. And that's it. We now have our crouching mechanic back and fully in our state machine, as well as our uncrouch check for overhead obstacles. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the written tutorials and the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.